my ROH Best in the World 2015 pay-per-view review, the pay-per-view show out there a little while ago as far as my thoughts on this show. I thought this was a hell of a show from Ring of Honor. While the first hour of the show might have not been that great, once you got to the number one contendership match and everything after that towards the main event, everything was good to great from that point on. Um, loved the main event with Jay Lethal versus Jay Briscoe. Um, Ring of Honor did an incredible job going into the buildup to that match where, you know, most companies, whenever they do the whole spiel and gimmick of this is the most important match or trying to make it seem like the most important match, a lot of times it comes off as complete horse shit. But they did an incredible job of making it seem like, yes, this is the most important match in Ring of Honor history. And just the incredible moment of Jay Lethal going in there, having a great match with Jay Briscoe and winning the Ring of Honor title. Ring of Honor did the right move there. It would have been a terrible ending to the pay-per-view if Jay Lethal would not have won the world title. So that was an incredible moment. You know, Jay Lethal becoming Ring of Honor champion. Definitely the moment of the night was that. And then other than that, you had a crazy, insane, nuts six-man tag with uh, AJ Styles teaming up with the Young Bucks, taking on the Bullet Club of Bennett, Taven, and Cole. That was crazy craziness. That's a match that everyone can enjoy. I mean, it was a spot fest, but it was a fun, fun spot fest and just great, great stuff involved in there. And then Roger Strong, Moose, and Michael Elgin, the number one contendership match. That was very fun stuff. And Roger Strong won that, became the number one contendership match contender and we are going to be seeing Roger Strong and Jay Lethal in July at Death Before Dishonor so looking forward to that and Roger Strong in 2015 just sh is showcasing more and more why this is probably easily his best year in his whole entire wrestling career I mean if you're missing out you're missing out if you're not seeing Roger Strong in 2015 and then the addiction and Red Dragon I was Red Dragon tag match I was expecting a little more from it um, it was a little bit disappointing but after having to go out there after that crazy six-man tag and then it was right before the main event you kinda it was kinda in the dead dead spot of the pay-per-view where you kinda knew you couldn't really go out there and you know do something where you would might you know you had to hold back a little bit for the main event, and then you couldn't go out there and out top the match you had on before then. But this show is definitely something I would recommend people go out their way to see. Let me get into uh, my review of it. Uh, the first matchup was Donovan Dijek versus Mark Briscoe. So this was a you know smart idea to have this as the opener, even though it wasn't that great of a match. It made perfect sense. You had a member of the House of Truth. With Truth Martini being out there, and you know later on you have the main event of Jay Briscoe and Jay Lethal, so you have Mark Briscoe taking on a member of, How of the House of Truth with Donovan Dijak here. So it made sense this being the opener here, and you had uh, Mark Briscoe. He picked up the win after hitting the splash off the top rope to Donovan Dijak. Donovan Dijak ended up trying to hit his uh, finisher, but J uh, Mark Briscoe uh, blocked that. Then ended up picking up the win here. So. Mark Briscoe picks up the win there to kick off the show. Solid opener, nothing too great, but it was decent for what it was. It would have been, you know, a really, you know, solid TV match. About, you know, two and one, four stars, two and a half stars. Decent, decent match to start start the show off with, and the crowd was into it. Uh, Mark Briscoe, you know, can play to the crowd very well. And then the next matchup was the decade of BJ Whitmer and Adam Page versus ACH and Matt Seidel and ACH this year has been really, you know, showcasing not only can he go out there and, you know, do his crazy dives and stuff like that, and he's a good wrestler, but he's really been showcasing this year that he has improved a lot on the mic. I like the stuff they did leading into this pay-per-view with him and Adam Page, and the way they ended this match, this feud is obviously going to be continuing with him and Page here. Um, it was a decent match. It was a look, uh, having... ACH and Matt Seidel teaming together, you would expect something greater from a tag match than what you got here. It wasn't too bad. For the most part, Adam Page was the person in, in, in the ring for the most part for the decade. BJ Whitmer did a few things, but not much. I mean, BJ has not been that good in Ring of Honor in a long, long time since, you know, the days of his feud with Jimmy Jacobs and the Ring of Honor versus Combat Zone feud. 
he hasn't really been much of anything in recent years in Ring of Honor. But, you know, he's kind of rubbing him, he's kind of giving a rub to Adam Page here. I do see a bright future for Adam Page within Ring of Honor and possibly even, you know, further out, out of Ring of Honor and maybe WWE at some point. Who knows? Um, but this match uh, came to end when uh, Adam Page picked up the victory by pinning Matt Seidel. So they still are going on the whole storyline narrative of ACH can never get the big win so but he didn't get the he didn't get penned in here so obviously they'll be continuing probably at uh death before dishonor which is the internet pay-per-view that's going to be airing in july well i think july 24th i think that's the date we'll probably see adam page versus ach on that on that uh internet pay-per-view it was a decent tag match but like i said with ach and matt side hell teaming together on a pay-per-view you'd expect a little better of a match than what you got here but it was it was solid nothing too special though Two and one, four stars. Uh, then the next matchup was Silas Young versus Dalton Castle. Um, you know, this was, you know, purely an entertainment match. And that's what it was supposed to be. That's what, like, a lot of Dalton Castle matches are supposed to be. Even though Dalton Castle is a good in-ring performer. But, you know, he, he has such, he has so much charisma. He has the it factor. I definitely see him being, you know, if they, he goes anywhere outside of Ring of Honor, you know, WWE or New Japan, I could see, you know, this gimmick really catching on, especially in WWE. This is something that would catch on in WWE, and he's so charismatic and just plays the crowd so well. And, you know, this this is something, this, this is some star you're going to be hearing about in the future that, you know, just as long as he doesn't get some corny, uh, corny gimmick and he continues, like, playing this type of gimmick and or something like it, he's going to have a really, really strong future in professional wrestling because he so so charismatic and just the just the whole storyline clashing with this was silas young saying you know he's the only he's the last real man in professional wrestling and dalton castle being you know this flamboyant character i mean it just they clashed very well with each other um you saw one spot the one spot in the match that i really liked a whole lot was the one spot where Dean Ambrose has been doing in ring in uh, WWE where he does the slide into the ring and lariat, but in this case, Dalton Castle did the slide and did a Hurricane Rana to Silas Young, and you had Dalton Castle uh, pick up the win in this pick up the win in this match. Uh, then after the match, Silas Young beats down uh, Dalton Castle's boys. So with that, I would say we're probably going to be seeing these two against each other once again. It makes sense with the whole you know flamboyant character versus the gimmick of the other guy saying he's the last real man and is basically calling the other one a pansy. So it makes sense continuing this decent match. You know, it was very entertaining. I, I, it was in, uh, definitely an entertaining match. Wrestling-wise, it was okay at best. But entertainment-wise, just for how fun it was, I have to at least give it two and a half stars because it was entertaining stuff. And then the next matchup was the weakest match of the night, I thought. And, but this did, it did lead to some storyline later on that it let it served its purpose, so it led to something later on. This was CNC of uh, Caprice Coleman and um, Cedric Alexander teaming up to take on War Machine of Hanson and Rowe. This wasn't much of a match at all. They did one spot. They did one part where Caprice Coleman was wanting to tag, was about to tag in Cedric. Cedric, you know, wanted the tag, and for some reason. Caprice Coleman didn't want to, and you saw a little clash between them within this whole whole entire match. So you knew there was going to be a breakup with them too. And then you have Hanson and Hanson and Rowe hit their finisher on Caprice Coleman. They pick up the win, so War Machine picks up the win. And then after this match, you know Caprice Col uh, Cedric Alexander comes in there, says he had enough. C and C are no more. He's not no longer. To, he's he wants to be by himself. And then. This led to some. The match at least served a purpose where it went led to something uh, very soon, which led to after the next match. Uh, the next matchup was the number one contendership match with Michael Elgin versus Moose versus Roger Strong for the number one contendership. This was a fun, fun match. Um, everyone worked well with each other. Uh, normally, a lot of triple threats are you know a little sloppy at first, where it takes a little while for the competitors really clash and mesh well with each other but didn't really take in these three long at all the crowd is on moose's side completely that's who the crowd was on the whole entire time they liked roderick as well obviously elgin gets the hill treatment here and just a lot of good stuff in here you saw you know great uh drop kick uh from uh moose which 
the stuff he can do with the size he is and how how green he still is to some degree. I mean, he is really going to be a big star in, in wrestling, I would say, because last year, you know, I didn't think he was ever going to be much of anything. He's he's probably the most improved wrestler of the year. I mean, easily within just a one-year span, he's turned himself into a very good in-ring performer. And Roger Strong, just like I said earlier, if you are not haven't seen any of Roger Strong in 2015, you're missing out because he has been great this whole entire year. And Elgin did some good stuff. You saw great action in here, a lot of good stuff. Uh, just a fun, fun match, and the right person wins. Roger Strong picks up the win. He uh, pins Moose in this match. And then after the match, you have Veda Scott come in there, uh, goes after Moose for losing. And then it looks like you're going to have uh, Moose uh, hit the spear on Veda Scott. Then you see Cedric Alexander come out there. He's got the wrench. He attacks Moose. He attacks Stokely Hathaway. They're both laid out. And then he's smiling. He hands the wrench to uh, Veda Scott, and him and Veda Scott leave there. So you had, in this moment, you had Cedric Alexander with the hill turn. And then obviously, Moose is now. You know, he probably he already was based on how the crowd was already reacting, but with him being with Veda Scott, they were kind of trying for him to be a heel, but he was starting to get so much of a face reaction, it made perfect sense to finally turn him completely babyface, and that's what they did here. And I think I'm going to love seeing Cedric Alexander as heel. I see a lot of great things right there. I'm going to really enjoy that. That is going to be some fun, fun stuff. And as far as the, uh, the triple threat match, really enjoyed it a lot. Rating wise, I probably get three and three four stars. Really enjoyed it. That that was the that that was the point of the show where this turned into being a very very good pay per view. And then up next was the Kingdom of Bennett, Taven, and Cole versus AJ Styles and the Young Bucks of the Bullet Club, and a six man tag. And this was so so crazy. I mean, this was just a nuts and insane match. I mean, can't say can't go through every single thing that took place in this match because it was so many things in it. It was a spot fest, but it was a fun, fun spot fest. I mean, the stuff that was very memorable in here is you saw a double indie taker at, towards the end of the match uh, to uh, Bennett and Taven, and that took them out of the match. And then, really cool spot, you had uh, Maria get, get involved. She came and she got on the ring apron. And AJ Styles grabbed, uh, grabbed her into the ring. She slapped AJ. And then you saw the Young Bucks, uh, Matt and Nick Jackson hit hit a su double super kick and AJ hitting the Pele kick at the same time to Maria right there. And then the end of the match, uh, you saw AJ Styles hitting the Styles Clash on Adam Cole after a lot of lot of stuff, a lot of you know uh, combo moves that AJ Styles and the Bucks did. This was just you know. It, it wasn't a technical base six man tag. No, it wasn't ever supposed to. It was never intended to be. Um, it was just a fun match that everyone could get into. There's not one person I could I could think of that wouldn't like that. I mean, yes, it was you know a spot fest, but it was a fun fun spot fest. And what wrestling fan doesn't enjoy seeing some crazy insane tag match that just basically moves in spots? That's basically what it was. But it was fun fun stuff and. Just loved it. Um, it's kind of hard to say because if it, if it was the match tonight, it, it might be the match tonight with me. But with the moment of lethal in the title, that almost outweighs it. But I give it, you know, four and one four stars, maybe even four and a half. It was a great six man tag. And then after that, uh, I was really looking forward to the next match. But unfortunately, it wasn't a letdown where it was a terrible match. I was just expecting more from it. This was Red Dragon versus the Addiction. For the ROH Tag Team Titles in a no disqualification match, um, you saw you know stuff involved in here. The barricades got involved, ladder spots uh, and chair spots as well. But uh, you you expected to be just a little more crazy than what it was. You obviously at the end saw Saban get involved. He ended up costing Red Dragon this match, and then the Addiction end up hitting Celebrity Rehab for the win, so the Addiction remain Tag Team Champions, and this feud will continue, which I'm liking it for it to continue. Uh, don't know what they'll do next. I would expect maybe since they had the ladders involved, maybe at some point we're going to see a ladder war for the Tag Team Championships. We haven't seen that in a little bit, um, so that's where I would expect you know Red Dragon versus the Addiction feud to lead to next, um, but 
it was a fun match. I would still give it, you know, three and a half stars because it was a good tag match. It was really good. You know, Kyle O'Reilly did some great stuff in it. Um, I just expected a little more from it. I was, uh, but after the match they had on before that, you couldn't really be too disappointed just because how many people could have, how many wrestlers could have gone out there and topped that insane six man tag that came on right before them? And then after this, you had the main event, which was obviously what the show was centered around: the battle for the belts, Jay Lethal versus Jay Briscoe for the for both championships, the ROH TV title and ROH World title. And you know, it was started off very slow and methodical. It had a very slow build, but I liked that. I liked what they did at the beginning where, you know, it was just a really slow paced match. Then it built up and then once you got halfway into it and close to the end, like last ten minutes of the match, it was great, great stuff. Um, towards the end you had uh you had Jay Lethal. He hit uh, the a lethal combination and then held to the King to uh, Jay Br to Jay Briscoe. And then he was. Then you saw Jay Briscoe and Jay Lethal battling on the ring apron. There was a table out there. They're trying to both uh, hit a move on each other to uh, knock each other to the table. And then you had uh, Truth Martini distract the ref. And then Jay Brisk uh, Jay Lethal low blowed uh, Jay Briscoe. At behind the ref, Nigel saw that. He was on commentary the whole time. He throws Truth Martini to the back. And then uh, Lethal basically takes forever. You know, he doesn't take advantage of the low blow and uh, hitting, a, hitting a brain buster or something through the table to uh, Jay Briscoe. Jay Briscoe ends up hitting the Jay Driller to Lethal through the, through the uh, table on the outside. And then just the uh, ending sequences, because you knew, you knew it was coming, but... It, I was a little worried that they weren't going to go the route of having Lethal become champion, but thankfully they did. He hit Jay's own finisher, the Jay Driller, to Jay Briscoe at the end, then hits the Lethal Combination, wins the title, the crowd goes nuts. You had the Jay, Br Jay, uh, Jay Lethal's parents there, and you had Jay Briscoe's parents there as well. Jay, Bris Jay Lethal's parents were celebrating at the end, and just a great moment here. Lethal deserved it. It was a great match, four and one four stars. It was, you know, a match that had, you know, a very slow build to it. But once it got into it, it was a great main event and even bet even a better moment for Jay Lethal becoming champion. And this was a pay-per-view I definitely would recommend people go out their way to see. I would give it an 8.25 out of 10. Yes, the first hour of the show was a little weak, but once you got past that, you saw a great main event on here, an insane six-man tag, a very, very good number one contendership match, and the Ring of Honor Tag Team title match with Red Dragon versus The Addiction was very good as well. Just a little bit disappointing. That was probably the only thing I would say that was disappointing on here. And you had, even within the first hour, you had a little bit of entertainment with uh, the Silas Young and Dalton Castle match. So that's it for my ROH Best in the World 2015 pay-per-view. All right, peace.